with a special guest today. Her name is Marie Joel. Here she is. Hey, Marie Joel. Thank you so much for this week. Um, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most merciful Mother of God. Now we may be near the mark of our promise. Week 2, Day 1. The Immaculata always does God's will perfectly. Yesterday we learned about the intimate union between the Holy Spirit and Mary, the uncreated and created Immaculate Conceptions. Now we may be thinking, that's nice, but what follows from that? Here's what follows. Mary does the will of God perfectly, and this is a big deal. Let's take a step back and put this into context by looking at the big picture of reality. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, all of creation makes one big circular movement from God and back to God, referred to by theologians as the great circle of being. Aquinas writes, issuing from the primary principle, creatures accomplish a sort of circuit, a giratory movement such, such that all things, when they tend to their proper and are returning to the principle whence they came forth. We were created by the Son and by the Holy Spirit, and hence it is by them that we are brought back to our end. Now St. Maximilian Kolbe, being the good theologian that he was, describes this big picture structure of reality in a similar way. He begins by pointing to our own experience of the world. Everywhere in this world we notice action, departure and return going away and coming back, separation and reunion. The separation always looks forward to union, which is creative. All this is simply an image of the Blessed Trinity in the activity of creatures. What Colby describes here really is true. It's the structure of the cosmos. Everything has come forth from God and is going back to God, more or less perfectly. This movement is sometimes called the great exit and return. Although Colby uses the term separation instead of exit, he's got the same idea. First, God creates the universe. That is something like a separation. Creatures by, creatures by following the natural law, implanted in them by God, reach their perfection, become like him, and go back to him. Intelligent creatures, human beings, love him in a conscious manner. Through this love, they unite themselves more and more closely with him, and so find their way back to him. Among all creatures in the universe, Colby believes that the Immaculata deserves special mention. The creature most completely filled with this love, filled with God himself, was the Immaculata, who never contracted the slightest strain of sin, who never departed in the least from God's will, united to the Holy Spirit as his spouse, she is one with God in an incomparably more perfect way than can be predicted of any other creature. Let's reflect for a moment on this vision of reality. First, everything's going forth from God. Think of all creation. God speaks and it goes forth from him. Then, plants and animals return to God by fulfilling their natures, by being what they were created to be. They do this without thinking or deliberating and with a sort of ease. It happens by a kind of instinctual autopilot. Human beings, on the other hand, are different. While there are times when we act by instinct, we also act in a way different from the animals. We act by reason and will, and we're conscious as we do so, present to ourselves as we act. This is what it means to be made in the image of God. We can know God and love him, and whereas the animals do God's will by instinct, we can do his will freely and consciously. The problem is we abuse the freedom God gave us. We don't always choose his will, and so we don't return to him as we should. We sin. And if we sin gravely and don't fully repent, then we don't make it back to God. This is a great tragedy of human life. But thanks be to God, for he sent his only Son and the power of his Spirit to save us to bring us back home to our Father in heaven, and thank God that after the fall of the human race, he made a creature who was conceived without sin and who was freely and perfectly conformed to his will. 
for she is perfectly united with the Holy Spirit. She helps us poor sinners along the way. She helps us to overcome the tragedy of sin. She leads us to do God's will, to return to God and become saints. We'll hear more about this tomorrow. Come Holy Spirit living in Mary. Renew the face of the earth so that all creation may return to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.